Hey guys, uh, so I'm still working on the front end and hopefully I have it all put together uh, today and if not tomorrow. But essentially what I have here is the replacement springs um, for my uh, sailing Mustang. And these are the old, oops, sorry. These are the old um, racecraft. And then I went with the Steeda 650 inch pound uh, springs. And uh, the reason why I did that is because uh, for one, when I went to the sailing website, aside from being super expensive, um, they didn't provide any details on the spring rate. Um, it's kind of a crappy, um, I hate to say it, but uh, it's just not very good uh, service, I guess, when it comes to like online uh, retailing and, and in comparison to everyone else, you know, like LMR, American Muscle, they have very detailed descriptions of all the all the uh, parts that they sell, whereas Saline is uh, not so much the case. But in any <clears throat> any case, I uh, ended up buying a uh, set. So these are the front ones here, and then you got the rear ones there. Uh, I think they're about 250 inch pounds uh, uh, springs. Uh, got the isolators. And uh, just as a reminder, I am setting up this car uh, for the occasional drift event and uh, street as well. So uh, I did not go with coilovers on this car. Uh, reason for that is uh, I don't like the idea of having all that force in the strut tower. Um, I like to spread that out, you know, between the spring on the frame and then the shock uh, for everything else. So um, anyways, Yeah, check these out. This is definitely a lot beefier. These are single adjustable, so there's your control knob. And in comparison to the ones that come with saline, that these are definitely worn out. They're very, very old. It's got a ton of miles on them. But you can tell the difference here. These are definitely the Kia ones are uh, beefier and the reason I went with them is because I um, I removed the lower sway bar front front end sway bar where is it and the reason for that I know a lot of you are probably gonna hate it but I need more angle uh, in my steering and this definitely gets in the way so the plan is to have the sway bar off have a uh, stiffer uh, spring up front with adjustable shocks and that should mitigate the body roll. All right, getting the springs on. I'm gonna try this method where I have uh, the bolts are here finger tight. Uh, I'm not gonna torque them down prior to this because what happens is once you got it fully torqued down, it pinches the little control arm, control arm and then won't allow it to go up and down. So. Instead of using a, a spring compressor, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack the local control arm up, compress the spring uh, to match the the strut. Uh, so and hook it up that way. I'm standing away from the spring itself uh, in case all this falls apart and it comes flying out. It's not gonna hit me. So uh, this is how I'm lifting it. At the same time down here I don't know if you can tell uh, but this is gonna sit right here up against this little stop um, prevent pretty much prevents the uh, the spring from twisting around so you just gotta make sure when you lift this up this lens somewhere in that area um, so I'm gonna compress this by lifting it up and then and then attaching the uh, spindle after that and see if I can get the shocks or the shock in there and uh, tighten down all right, so it's in there. The jack is holding the pressure. The uh, spindle is in there finger tight. Piece of cake. And uh, now I'm just gonna get the uh, shock transferred over. <clears throat> so if you're wondering uh, where these were, uh, if you order the Q81 caster camber plates, uh, you'll get these right here. Uh, so basically they're spacers uh, when you take out your old uh, assembly up here, you're gonna have to put these in. So I'm gonna transfer these over to the queue at once and then slide the shock in place. 
I got the uh, shock lined up with the uh, spindle. And uh, just make sure you torque down the castle nut before hooking up the, uh, the shock. As you can tell, there's not enough room to get a torque wrench uh, and socket in there. Uh, so, now that I got it lined up, uh, see if I can do it with one hand. There it goes. Get the other one. Let's see. In order to get the uh, the bottom uh, bolt lined up, I had to lift the jack up a little bit. Uh, the top one, obviously, you saw me slide it in there. The second one it almost looked like it didn't line up, so it scared me for a second. Uh, I just lifted the jack, and then it was fine after that. Uh, I just what I did up here. I ended up uh, putting a spacer up here um, where I didn't have it that, like that before, and the only reason why I did that is. Uh, when, when I put the, when I fed the shock through, I realized that part of the threads, uh, was still inside the caster camber, uh, uh, hole, I guess. So basically what I did was I took out the spacer from underneath to allow, uh, the shock to feed through a little bit further up. So that way the threads are not, um, <clears throat> not inside the caster camber um, area here, if that makes any sense. All right, something very interesting that um, I just found a solution for. Um, when I first, I so um, I, I got the steering rack on and uh, I have offset um, bushings uh, with it. So I brought the steering rack up a little bit. Um, the steering column, Let's see what you can see well here right where I'm holding with my hand um, this steering column actually retracts and extends uh, so the first issue uh, that I thought I had was that it wasn't long enough um, and then I went in here and then pulled it and it actually extended all the way to the length that I needed uh, now the second issue was because of the offset uh, bushing uh, and the steering rack being up a little bit higher now the, um, let's see if we can get a better angle here. Sorry about this. Uh, let's see. Let's see my hand at. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay. So, um, this here, this little, um, thread that you see there, that's where the, uh, the bolt, that secures the shaft to the uh, steering rack goes through. But anyways, since the steering rack is sitting up a little higher, uh, it didn't quite line up once I, I figured out that I needed to extend the uh, steering column out a little further. So what I did to mitigate that issue is that I, I grabbed a crowbar, just a regular crowbar, and I pretty much uh, stuck it in there where I leveraged it up against the motor mount. So basically I put it, I put the uh, the crowbar on top of the steering column and then leveraged it like so by the uh, motor mount and then pressed down on it. Uh, the bushings will compress and then it'll get back to the normal angle that it was at before. So with one arm you'll press down on the steering column and uh and then you'll be able to slide the uh the, the uh i'm sorry press down the steering rack and then you'll be able to slide the steering column into place after that so uh ho hopefully that was useful for you